Hi, my dear students. Uh, in this video, we'll explain the stoichiometry. Uh, first, we need to know what is stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative relationship between amounts of reactants used and the amount of products formed by a chemical reaction. So, if you have a chemical reaction between two substances like A and B to give products like C and D, we are going to practice the quantitative relationship, so the amounts of the products and reactants in terms of moles. Secondly, we are going to interpret chemical equation in terms of moles, molecules, number of atoms, and mass. Let's take an example. Na2CO3 plus 2HCl gives 2NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. It's a balanced equation. What can we deduce from this balanced equation? We need to learn about moles, about atoms, about molecules, and about mass. When we say mass, we mean the unit should be in grams. In terms of moles, we have, as here, no number is written, so we do mean one. So there is one mole of sodium carbonate reacts with two moles of HCl to give two moles of NaCl, one mole of water, and one mole of CO2. We call this mole ratio. In terms of atoms, we have here how many atoms are reacted. You can just count number of atoms. 2 plus 1, 3 plus 3, 6. So I have 6 atoms. And here, 3 atoms. Here, uh, uh, sorry, 3 into 2 because we have a 2 here. So it will be 6. On either side here, I have 2 in ACL, means 2 sodium and 2 Cl. So total 4 atoms. Here the total is 3 atoms. The total is 3 atoms. There was a mistake here. HCl is just two atoms, H and Cl. So we have two into two is four. If you count the number of atoms in reactants and the number of atoms in products, you will guess that they should be equal. I have on the product side 10 atoms and on the reactant side also 10 atoms. Secondly, the number of molecules. The number of molecules are equivalent to the number of moles. The difference is mole is a unit of mass or matter quantity, but molecules is just number. So I have here one molecule of sodium carbonates react with two molecules of HCl to give two molecules of NaCl one, mole, uh, one molecule H2O and one molecule carbon dioxide. The most important part now is to find the mass. The mass uh, of substance equal the number of moles into molar mass. So the mass, which is should be in gram, equal a uh, number of moles multiplied by molar mass which is gram per mole. Um, so if you just have one mole of substance, in order to get the mass, you will multiply one into molar mass. So it's here will be one into the molar mass of sodium carbonate. We can calculate uh, Na2CO3 equal 2 into 23 plus 12 plus 16 into you will get the atomic mass from the periodic table, 106. HCl, 
hydrogen, the mass of hydrogen is 1, mass of Cl is 35.5, total 36.5. So the mass here is 36.5. Okay, this is the molar mass. Remember that if you are asked what is the mass already reacted, you should multiply this number into 2, the number of moles. The mass equal, mass equal molar mass into number of moles. So if you multiply 36.5 into 2, it will be 73. On the other side, NaCl, 2 moles of NaCl. Find first the molar mass of NaCl. Na23 plus 35.5 equal 55.5. And I have 2, so you should multiply this number into 2. So 55.5 into 2 equal 111. H2O, we have 1 mole. Molar mass of water, 2 plus 16 equal 18. Molar mass of carbon dioxide, 12 plus 16 into 2, equal 44. And if you count the total mass of reactant, it will equal the total mass of products. Total mass of reactant, 106, plus 73, it will give you 179 gram. Also, if you add the masses of product, 111 plus 18 plus 44, it, they will be counted for uh, 179 gram. In this way, we are proving the law of conservation of mass, which is say that the mass of reactants equal the mass of product, or the mass uh, is not changed, not created or destroyed during a chemical reaction. We should learn now how to change mass of a, a, a compound into mass of another compound in a chemical reaction. So if you have mass A and ask to get mass B, one of them could be on the reactant side and the other one will be on the product side. If you need to change from mass to mass, in a chemical equation, there are some steps that you should follow. First, you will change mass A into mole A, and then change mole A into mole B. And from mole B, you can get mass B. To change from mass to mole, so you will work out the triangle mass, mole, and the molar mass. So you need to divide by, you divide the mass by molar mass. To change mole to mole, you will work out mole ratio. And I will show you how. To change mole to mass, again, you will work out this triangle by multiplying, because if you need to get the mass, you need to multiply number of moles into molar mass. So you will multiply here by M. How to work out a more, more ratio? If you get moles of A like 3, the more uh, according to the balanced equation, if 3 was written here as a coefficient in front of A and 2 was written as a coefficient in front of B. And the moles of A that you got from calculation was like 0.5 moles. How many moles can I get from B? You will make cross multiplication. Cross multiplication shows you that like 2B into 0.5 mole equal 3A into X or unknown. How to get this unknown? You will divide 2 into 0 0.5 over 3. 
so 0.33 moles so if you have mole of a chemical and you need to get the mole of another one look for the coefficient written in front of the chemical and make cross multiplication with one unknown and then get the unknown the two known values in front of each other should be multiplied and the uh, you will divide by the known value here so you will get the unknown let's take this example when propane c3h8 reacts with chlorine gas all of the carbon is converted to carbon tetrachloride ccl4 how much ccl4 is produced when 4.41 grams of c3h8 reacts with excess chloride what is the reaction all about is reaction between c3h8 and chlorine to produce ccl4 of course there is another product but you are not asked about it and he gave you the molar mass molar mass c3h8 44.1 and for ccl4 154. You are given also the mass of C3H8, 4.41 grams. And you are asked about how much CCL4. So you, are, uh, you have been asked about the mass of CCL4. So now we have a normal systematic problem. You are given mass of A and the unknown is mass of B. So how can we convert mass A to mass B? Remember, first you need to get the moles of A. Then we need to get the moles of B. And then convert the moles into mass. To get moles of A, you divide mass over molar mass. So moles of A equal mass over molar mass. So, uh, you will get uh, 0 0.1 mole. Remember and don't forget to balance at least the number of carbon atoms in your equation. C3, so here you should put 3. Don't forget it. Then, to change number of moles of A into number of moles of B, you need to work out mole ratio. What is the more ratio between C3H8 and CCL4? The more ratio is 1 to 3. So if you have 1 mole of A, you need 3 moles of B. So if I have 0.1 mole of A, how much I have from B? You will work out the cross multiplication. 3 into 0.1 over 1. You will get it 0.3. Of course, you can do it without any calculation by just uh, uh, put a point because here it was 1 and 3 and then we put a decimal point here. So you can just put a decimal point here converting it into uh, moles. Step 3. Step 3, we need to get the mass of B. How to convert mole to mass? By multiplying molar by the molar mass so mass of b or ccl4 here equal number of moles into molar mass which is already given 154 you will get the answer 46.2 grams Forty six point two. Question 2. S plus 3F2 equal SF6. When 0.5 mole of S is mixed with 1 mole of F2 and the reaction occurs according to the equation above, what is the maximum mass of SF6 that can be formed? So you are given moles of A and you are asked about mass 
of B. So you need first to convert mole of A into mass, uh, sorry, into moles of B, and then moles of B into mass of B. You are given here the number of moles, 0.5 mole, mixed with 0.1 moles of F2. And you are asked about mass of SF6. I can't solve the problem like that. You should get first the limiting factor. Let us explain what is the limiting factor. Limiting factor is the factor which controls the rate of reaction. And it is the factor which exists in minimum quantity. It's the smallest quantity or is smaller than what's required for the reaction to take place. If you look here at this equation, it's a, a, you have a more ratio between S and F. The more ratio is 1 to 3. Means for every mole of S, I need 3 moles of F2 to react completely. So, take any of those values. Suppose I will take this. If you have Point five moles of S. So how many moles of F2 I need to react? Cross multiplication 3 into 0.5 over 1 equal 1.5. So I need 1.5 moles to react with 0.5 moles of sulfur. But we don't have that amount. We have only one mole. Here it's one more. We have only one more of F2, not 1.5. And this means that the amount of fluorine you are given is less than what's required for the reaction because the reaction requires actually 1.5 moles, but I have only one. So F2 is a limiting factor or a limiting reagent. And the limiting reagent or the limiting factor is that one which controls the rate of reaction. So if you are going to make any further calculation, you will need only to use the limiting factor. And you are going to ignore sulfur and the amount given from sulfur. So we will not be using this value again we'll use only the moles of F2. So now you have moles of A and you are asked about mass of B. What is the procedure? First, change mole of A into mole B. How to change mole to mole? Work out the mole ratio again. Here, I have uh, the mole ratio is 3 to one. So for every three moles of F2, one mole of SF6 will be produced. So if I have 0.1, uh, sorry, it was one, not 0.1. It's given here one mole. So one mole of F2 requires, making cross multiplication, one into one over three, it will be one over three or 0.33. So, you change it now, moles of A into moles of B. Next step is to change mole into mass. Mass of B equal number of moles multiplied by the molar mass, and you are given the molar mass, 146. The answer will be 48.67 grams. So the nearest answer to our answer is B. So very simple. 
uh, if you are asked about more of a, a, a a reactant or a product, sorry, and you are given mass of reactant, change first mass of a reactant into mole by multiplying by the molar mass and then work out the mole ratio to get the moles of B and from moles of B you can get mass B by multiplying it by the number of moles into molar mass. In uh, this question, you are asked to interpret the equation, the number of terms of, in terms of moles and in terms of mass. In terms of moles, it's two moles of NaCl that react with one mole of PbNO3 to give two moles of NaNO3 and one mole of lead chloride. While in terms of mass, you need to convert moles to mass. How to convert mole to mass? Multiply by the number of moles into molar mass. So you should calculate first the molar mass. Molar mass of NaCl, 23 plus 35.5 equal 55.5. Molar mass of PbNO3O2 equal 207. This is the molar mass of lead. You get it from the periodic table. Plus N, I have 2N, 14 into 2, plus 16, which is the molar mass of oxygen, into 3 into 2, equal 331 grams. Molar mass of NaNO3 equal Na23 plus N is 14, O3, 16, N to 3. The total will be 170. Molar mass of PBCL2 equal 207 plus 35.5 into 2. The total is 278. Here 331 and here is um, 85. These are the molar mass. So in order to calculate the mass, you will multiply. Okay, so 2 into 55.5 equal 117 grams. Uh, here, one mole, so you will use the value as it is, 331 grams. Sodium uh, nitrate, two moles, you will multiply 2 into 85 equal 170 grams. And PBCL2, just one mole, so use the value, uh, which is 278 grams. So you can say that 117 grams of uh, sodium, uh, it's 111, yeah, 111. 111 grams of sodium chloride reacts with 30, uh, 331 grams of lead nitrate to produce 170 grams of sodium nitrate and 278 grams of lead chloride. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video. Good luck.